we're going to hand over to Laura, who has given us a little sneak peek. So I'm really beyond excited. Um, do you want to take it away? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Laura Klepper. I'm from the University of New Hampshire. I lead the Ecological Acoustics and Behavior Lab. Um, and my, I'm going to be talking today about bats, in particular, um, one super fun part of what I do with my research, one piece of tech, which is the hawk ear. Uh, but I use tech in, in a lot of ways uh, in my work. Actually, I, I just made the connection that Adria and I actually uh, met at a conference just a few weeks ago, and we're talking about collaborating labs. So I'm going to be sending him an email after this. <laughs> so it's it's just really great to see uh, how, how tech is intersecting with what everybody is doing. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, my device called the Hawk Ear and how we can use falconry combined with technology to capture the, the behavior of moving organisms. And in particular, um, this is with bats in flight. So um, the fundamental question that I'm interested in with my work when, when I study the, the sensory motor behavior of bats is how I can combine acoustics and video recordings to understand the flight behavior of animals. And I, I do this in almost everything I do with studying animal behavior. I have the synchronized acoustics with the video recordings. But when you have bats that are leaving a cave and they're flying in their environment, navigating three-dimensional space, the challenge of how you can record mobile animals with stationary equipment um, uh, can be a bit of a, of a barrier sometimes for, for the data that we want to collect. So in the past, we have attempted this with traditional drone recordings. We have put cameras and microphones on drones when bats are flying at really high altitudes, and we've gotten fantastic acoustic signals. But these were when bats were moving their environment where they are fairly sparse. Um, and if you if you pay attention to the drone, if you know anything about drones, you'll know that most drones have spinning little rotor blades, uh, which could be a bit of a challenge when you're recording dense groups of bats, such as this um, uh, video taken at my primary field site, which is when bats are leaving from the cave. So if you send a drone into bats of this density, um, you're going to have a problem on your hands uh, from a multitude of factors, from ethical issues, from permitting issues, from data collection issues. So when I was faced with this challenge, um, due to a very creative discussion I had with a collaborator who actually studies falcon flight behavior, we came up with the idea of using a biological drone. So this is our biological drone. Uh, her name is Belle. She is a Harris hawk, a female Harris hawk. Um, and in this picture, which um, I submitted to the Tech for Wildlife Challenge, I think it was last year, and I got a lot of traction, which was really fun. Um, this shows her in action. So she has um, um, a sensory unit on her head, and she's trained to fly through the bats to capture the data. So um, again, this is a falconry-based platform. Uh, she's kept at uh, the field site in New Mexico. She's trained with a master falconer, um, and she's kept there year-round under his care. And then on her head, she carries a custom built ultrasonic audio unit that records at 250 kilohertz. And this was built in collaboration with an electrical engineering colleague at, at the University of Notre Dame and his senior design students. And then we have that, uh, we also have her carry a modified off the shelf camera. Um, in the past years, we've used both 4K and 1080p. Um, one of the challenges we have is weight on, on wild animals. When you talk about putting any sorts of uh, or weight on an animal in general, um, there's kind of this 5% rule that you want to play around with. Um, so you, you don't want the unit to be more than 5% the body weight. So we strip, we're just trying to remove as much weight as possible. And we're always up against the barrier of the weight of our unit. Um, and so uh, the current state is we record it with separate channels, audio and video, and then we manually synchronize with a very high tech way of clapping in front of our, our camera and our microphone, which is kind of the same way that movie studios with the, the synchronization board do it. Um, so uh, what does it look like when we get the data? Well, this is uh, an example of the audio and video we get from the Hawk. This is slowed down to 10% the original speed. So you can see what it looks like and you can also hear the bat signals. And what's happening is she's flying kind of through the bats from one handler me um, to Paul uh, Donsky, who's the master falconer. And you can see him um, just at the end. So she's trained to fly from falconry glove to falconry glove. So here we go.
And so we do that over and over and over and over again to get lots of data uh, from right inside the bat swarm, which we previously would have never been able to do with, with our traditional recording methods. So aside from, from just the fun of saying I'm flying a hawk through bats in the middle of the desert, uh, there is scientific value to this. So we're in the middle of the next steps with the analysis. Now that we have this really nice data set, we're currently using, um, we've in the past developed machine learning approaches so we can extract overlapping uh, echolocation calls from these really dense recordings and then look for changes in the echolocation signal so we can quantify with some clustering techniques variation in the bat calls um, so that we can begin to understand a little bit more of this fundamental question of how are bats sensing and how are bats using their echolocation in groups. So we're currently investigating how flight behavior affects echolocation behavior, how the spatial position of the bat in that group might affect what signal it's using so that we be get, can begin to understand if these animals are really just operating as an individual unit or if there is some sort of collective sensing that is involved in that. Um, so um, some next steps, which is also why I'm really excited to talk with everybody is that uh, this is some of the challenges that we're up against is, is right now we're trying to work on how we can fit multiple audio recording channels onto our unit for localization. Again, we're constrained by weight. We're always fighting this weight issue. Um, we're really trying to work on finding an off-the-shelf camera that we can kind of cannibalize into different components um, that has lower weight than what's been available. Um, and then trying to find if there's a way that we can synchronize our unit internally. Um, again, fighting this, this low weight issue. Um, and then I would also be really curious to hear from other individuals if they think of other species or behavioral situations that this tech would be useful for, because um, I would really like to promote the use of falconry for many other data collection purposes. Um, so that was what I wanted to share with all of you. I'm excited to be able to talk about it. That was very cool. You got a lot of questions coming through in the chat. Uh, Eric, you and, and David basically had a similar question. Do you want to jump in and ask it? Sure, yeah. Um... Yeah, I was wondering what percent of the overall weight that the battery is, seems to me in a lot of electronics. Yes, so, oh, Eric, my engineer would kill me for not knowing this off the top of my head. Um, I know I know that we basically, we worked on getting the smallest battery possible. So that when the bats are flying, there's only about 15 minutes of emergence time that we can catch data. So if you wanna talk about a high stress situation, you only go to the field for like one week at a time out of the year. There's only one specific time in the middle, in the, in the day that these bats are leaving. You got like a 15 minute shot. You better hope you don't get a flat tire driving out to the cave and back. You better hope it's not raining. Um, so it's very high stakes, but we, to add to it, we made it so that our battery literally only has about 10 minutes of recording time period. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the actual number for you, but I do know that we use the smallest possible battery that we could. And that is a considerable part of uh, the weight the weight challenge on that. Um, and we're just using, I think, a rechargeable lithium ion. I'm a biologist. I'm, I should probably know that, but I think it's just a lithium ion battery. Awesome. Um, there is uh, quite a few questions in the chat that I'm going to ask you to pick up um, while we hand over to Ellie. But I'd also say that these are great questions to put out there and um, to have as a discussion on Wild Labs or to hang out after, if you have time to hang out a little bit afterwards. I'm sure a lot of the engineering type folk in the call might have some ideas. Other biologists as well for, for um, uh, different environments, it could be useful. So thank you so much for that. That was so cool. Mm -hmm.